going to be making salmon patties tonight, cream potatoes, and some fried okra. And it's going to be delicious. The kids are eating. May's already here. Amy's on her way. And so I'm going to open up this salmon and pick the bones and stuff out of it because that's what I do. And then I have already chopped up our potatoes and our okra. And so we'll start frying it up in a minute. All right, so this salmon, of course, has the skin and the bones when it comes out of the can. This is just double Q pink salmon. It's actually, I, I grew up calling it salmon, but when I went to college, people taught me to say salmon. And so now I, most of the time I do say salmon. All right, so I just grab it um, out of the can. I take a little bit of the skin off. And you don't have to. You can just mix it all up. I know a lot of y'all do. And then I put the good meat in a bowl that I'm going to mix them up in. And I leave the juice and the other stuff in this, in this one over here. Y'all let us know what y'all are doing on a Friday night. Um, are kids still playing football? Yes. So I imagine a lot of people are at football games tonight. It's been kind of rainy here. Um, so if you're at a football game, you won't be watching us, I guess. But if you're like us and you don't have any kids to go watch football, you're at home. So y'all tell us where you're from and where you're watching from tonight since we're live. I don't think they're going to be able to hear me, Tim, if I talk. I bet they can. You think? Yes. Y'all hear me when I'm talking. That, that's the first thing we need to find out before I start talking. Okay. We got people from Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa. Maryland. Oh, oh they can hear me if they're telling me where they're from. North Carolina. Can y'all help hear Chris? Y'all let us know if you can. Lancaster, South Carolina, Timsville, South Carolina. Some Carolina people. All right, I'm going to wash my hands, and then we're going to add our ingredients in our salmon patties, and I'll show you how I make mine. All right? Milton, Florida, down there near Pensacola. We know where Milton is. Patricia County, we sure know where that is. Have they told you if they can hear you or not? Somebody said yes, but I don't know. What they're awesome. You'll have to talk pretty loud, I'm sure, if you want them to hear you. Um, all right, I got some green onion. We're going to take three green onion. And I'm just taking off the, I always take off the outside peel when I do green onions. That's just what I do. That's what Mama did, so that's what I do. So I always just peel the outside off of it. The, the outermost one. I cut some of the leaves off. And then we're going to chop these up. And uh, since my chopping block is on that side, I'm just going to come around, chop these up, and we're going to throw them in here. So I like green onion in our salmon patties. And my hands uh, wet from just washing my hands, so i got to be careful. So if you've never put green onion, onion in your salmon patties, you ought to give it a try. It's really good. My daughter, my Amy, my youngest, absolutely loves salmon patties. My potatoes are uh, starting to boil over there. I need to go rescue them. Let me get these two big pieces out. When you boil potatoes, I bring them to a boil with a lid on. But you can't leave the lid on unless you want a big bowl over mess, can you? Okay, I'm going to come back around there and I'm going to throw these onions in here. And then I'll trade with you, Chris. Again. So we're just going to chop these up a little bit. Get them in here. In our bowl. 
Okie dokie. I like having my sink right here next to me. It's convenient. Should have got me out of. Um, now, Soda, you can't get right there, right up under my feet, honey bun. All right. So we're using this recipe. It's in our first cookbook on page 100, actually. So you put an egg in there. Um, I use flour, a lot of flour compared to most people. Uh, but most people that try my salmon patties love them. So we're going to use a half cup of flour. We're going to use a quarter cup of cornmeal mix. That's White Lily self-rising cornmeal mix. So it does have flour in it already. And we use about half teaspoon of pepper. We use about a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. And I typically put a little juice in here as well. And I mix them up. I'm going to get me a real spoon to mix these up. It's going to clank a little bit, but that's all right. We're live tonight. We're cooking just like Mama did. And uh, we might make a little noise. I noticed somebody from, let's see. I saw somebody from Long Island, New York. Oh, wow. We used to have neighbors in, that were from Long Island. Yeah, our neighbor across the street in Paulding County was from Long Island. I know I saw an Iowa. I remember that. Do you remember Rudy and Irene's last name? Uh, no. Me either. Their names were Rudy and Irene. Miss Rudy, I mean, Mr. Rudy and Miss Irene and Carly. We love them. We lived there long enough. We did see them transition to heaven. And um, I'm adding a little bit to this because I put a little bit more juice than I normally do. Sorry about that, y'all, but hey, it is what it is. I want to be able to form them into patties. All right, so we're going to get these over here. I'm going to turn on my oil. And while this oil is getting warm, we're going to mix up some okra. And I'm using corn oil. If you want to know what kind of oil I'm using, that's what my granny used. Uh, when she cooked with everything, she used corn oil. And we're going to turn both of these up. Because we're going to fry our okra in here. And we're going to do our salmon patties in here. Now, it's not going to take near as long to fry up some salmon patties as it is to... Um, Okra. Cooked the okra, but you know, I haven't cooked on the stove, so it may cook fast. We'll cook so, um, our potatoes are boiling good, and I don't want them to splash in my grease, so I'm going to turn them down just a little bit. Put them in the middle. I don't want them in the middle. I, I had them in the middle earlier, but I just don't really want them over there. Just not what I want. All right, we can step over here again, baby, and I'm going to mix this up. Okay, here's our okra. I'll cut it up. There's a lot of it. I'm going to put some buttermilk on it and toss it in that buttermilk. And then we're going to put some flour on it, salt and pepper as well. Let's toss it in the buttermilk first. Now, you want to get enough buttermilk on there that your batter is going to stick to it, but not so much that it's runny, runny. So, just put a little buttermilk on it. See, it's coated pretty good. A buttermilk tastes so good on fried okra. And I'm using whole buttermilk. If you use the low fat, then it's not going to be as thick. It's not going to stick to it quite as good. But if that's all you can get, that's all you can get. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, if that's all you can get, you might be better off getting a little bit of sour cream and tossing it in some sour cream. That would be delicious. And you're probably like, well, my mama never had sour cream. But you know what? Your mama probably had whole buttermilk, and now they don't even hardly sell it no more. But back then, everybody had it. We didn't have this low-fat stuff that we do today. 
which is fine if that's what you're drinking, but when you're just using it to batter something, it's nice to have thick buttermilk. Okay, so now I'm just going to toss some flour in it. And my mother did use cornmeal and flour when she battered her okra, but I don't. I use flour only, and I use self-rising white lily flour, and it's nice and crunchy um, and delicious when you make okra with it. It's some good stuff, ain't it, Chris? I'm trying to get all that flour on it that's down in the bottom. All right, that's ready to drop. So we're frying some stuff tonight. There's me a piece of okra in there. It's already hot. Mm -hmm. So this oven's going to work pretty doggone good. I do believe. So I'm going to have to, um, I don't know which one I'm playing with at the time. There it goes. So that's nice and hot. I would say it's ready. ready. Boy, there's a big difference in this oven and what I've been used to. Power. Yes, it does. Woo-hoo! Makes me happy. Makes me happy. And I, and I loaded it. So it needs to be hot, don't it? Matter of fact, I'm going to turn it up. Turn it up since I loaded it down. And then these are my salmon patties. And I just, you can turn them around like a croquet. I mean, roll them if you want to. Mama never did. She just threw them in there. But I don't think my uh, oil's ready over here yet. It's not quite ready. So while we're waiting a minute... I'll roll a couple of these, and then i got to get me some um, paper towels and stuff ready for when they come off. And if you haven't seen the kitchen yet, I'll back up. Some people have it. All right, Daddy, are we ready to drop these? Yeah. They're sticking to me. Sticking to me. I usually just use my spoon. I was trying to do it pretty for y'all tonight. Guess I should have stuck with my spoon. I'm going to rake this off. Go wash my hands. Because I got half the salmon patties on my hands. No, I don't really. Just a little bit. But we don't want to waste none. Amy's taking some to a friend of hers. So that's why I'm cooking a lot. She's going to take a plate home tonight. She had a test today, and she should be on her way, I hope. Here's me a rag I can use. Right here. All righty. So we got it cooking. Come on over here, Chris, and let them see the food. I'll turn up my potatoes a little. Looks good, don't it? You can see them onions in there good. Make some pretty, too, y'all. Make some pretty. 
Our okra's frying good. Now you don't want to touch it until it's golden brown. And I've got it in my wok today. I can test the bottom and make sure it's not burning, I guess. Right in the middle. Oh, it's fine. We're just going to let that sit in there and cook until it's nice and brown. I love using the wok because you don't have to use as much grease or oil, whatever you call it. Um, you don't have to use as much when you're frying them. And when I flip my salmon patties, I kind of smash them a little. So I flip them and smash them. You're going to let them get golden. Now, I put a lot of flour in them, so I do cook mine a few minutes because you want to make sure that they're done on the inside and that they've raised up puffy and pretty. I don't like bushy salmon patties on the inside, nor crab cakes. I like them to be done. So this is, they're really pretty and golden. I'm going to turn my heat down a little bit now that I've flipped them over. I, ca I can't, I haven't figured out which one's what yet. I'm pretty sure that that's the front. You turn down the I turned down the back. I'll get it eventually, I guess. All right. So let's get us something to put these on because these are going to get done pretty quick. How is everybody tonight? We got many people watching? 700. Oh, that's pretty good for Facebook. Thank y'all for watching. All right, we're going to let these get golden. We're not going to rush them because you want them to get good and nice and done on the inside. And then we'll drop the rest of them. And I'm going to put them up here under this light when they're done. They'll be good, good, good. Let's see how much uh, our potatoes are getting done. I need to forward. I'm just running Chris out of the kitchen. Now, I doubt I stay on long enough to cream the potatoes in front of y'all. Um, I'll probably just fry up this food, get it under the warmer, and let that be it. And then cream my potatoes once we're off here. Most of y'all know how I cream my potatoes by now. That's about five times faster than that other. Yeah, it's still not quite there. ready to flip. Not quite there. Getting there, but not quite there, y'all. We can get these out. Pretty. And one can of salmon goes a pretty long way. When you do it, when you cook it like I do. All right, we'll turn that on. Drop some more. This time, I'm just going to drop them. Like Mama would. Do it your way. She would drop them and then smash them. Just make a big one. That'll be a big one. Okay, I'll we'll smash them. I know I'm sticking to it. Here, let's let me use this and smash them. It'll be wet. They're sticky. All right. Leave this out. 
Did y'all notice my new canisters I got for my flour and stuff? I don't have them on the website yet for y'all, but I really like them. They're big. They're a gallon size, and they hold a five-pound bag perfectly. Perfectly. All right, that okra, I'm smelling it. I better turn it. Starting to smell it. Means you better turn it. Oh, it looks good, don't it? Still not quite there. You want it to get nice and brown before you flip it. Let's see how this over here looks. It looks brown. You don't want to flip it too much. Well, it looks good, though. All right. I'm going to put this stuff back over here. Clean up my space while Daddy looks. Shall watch the food. I'm sure when I walk, wearing this uh, thing to talk in, I've never had one. I've never had a lapel before, y'all. Do you like it? Can you tell? It should help with the echo in here. We do have high ceilings. Show them how high up it goes, Chris. It goes pretty high. My cat would like some of that. I'm going to put it right there for her. Everybody's going to be happy tonight, even the cats. There's a stupid fly in here. You tell we live out in the boonies. It's real life. There's flies. Oh, did y'all see my swing can opener? It's pretty cool. If y'all hadn't seen it, see how it works. It's kind of like a commercial one. Um, I do have that on the website. I love that thing. I had one woman send me a personal email and tell me that she got one and that she was amazed at how much easier it was for her to open cans because she has arthritis. So if you suffer from it, it is a good handy thing. My sister thinks I'm crazy. She uses an electric one. She's like, Tammy, why in the world don't you have an electric can opener? And I'm like, because I don't want it out on the counter. I got all this other stuff out on the counter, but I don't know. I just, I've never had one since we've been married, have I, Chris? No, I don't think so. Getting brown now. Maybe I'll get you one for Christmas or something. I'm going to turn probably. this light off so y'all can see the pretty okra. Because that red light makes it look weird. You see how pretty it's frying up and what I like about using flour. Look at that. See that beautiful crust? It's crunchy and delicious. And let me show you something else. You look down at the bottom of my grease and it's not full of cornmeal. Because that's what happens to okra when you put cornmeal on it. Half of it goes down in the bottom of the skillet. If you don't believe me, just give it a try. I bet you if you try your okra with buttermilk, and self-rising flour, you will make it again. I have people tell me all the time they try that too. They like it. It's pretty warm standing over this stove, though, mm -hmm. when it's on high. Boy, that's pretty, though, ain't it? I love my new stove, y'all. Oh, and let me tell y'all something about it. You know, if you were on here the first time I made biscuits in it, um... They didn't brown. I put them in this little oven. I didn't know it, but the oven, the little oven don't have one. But somebody taught me a trick. I haven't tried it yet, but I need to. Me and Chris don't get up and eat biscuits every day. <laughs> but um, anyway, it has a convection on this side. I can turn it on and it really gets everything brown like it should. So uh, that's nice. Because I was worried about that, not having a... I was afraid my baked goods wasn't going to brown good, but they do. They're going to. All right, let me fix me something to get this okra out on. Put 
it on a pipe light. I think it's ready, don't you? You think it's ready, Daddy? Wow. That looks a lot better than the first okra I fried in this kitchen. On that electric stove, don't it? Oh, Lord, yeah. Yeah, we like I didn't know what I was doing. Yo, I'm just used to gas. I cook better on it. You know, you get used to what you get used to. But now I grew up with electric. We just had a plain old electric coil stove like most of us did back in the day. And it, even my granny had, she had a big stove and a bunch of, you know, two ovens and all, but she still had electric. Well, that's the reason Tammy wanted this oven because her granny Gosh. had a double oven. Yes. That was the whole purpose. We wanted that double oven. And now we got it. And a lot of y'all are uh, like, well, y'all, it's only you and Chris, but uh, lots of times now I cook for me and Amy and their friends. So we have more to feed than we did back in the day. But that okra is absolutely gorgeous. Now that is perfectly fried okra. Not too brown, not too light. I mean, it's good. See, and I turned it off and it's off. And um, see, the, it's just wonderful. It's just wonderful. So we're going to turn on our heat lamps and keep this stuff warm up here while I cream some potatoes. How many we got going on now, Chris? 694. Do y'all want to stay on while I cream my potatoes? It's up to y'all. Might as well. Might as well. Made you start our video? Good. We're playing a video on YouTube tonight for pimento cheese. I'll show y'all that in just a minute. So y'all can go over there and watch it if you want to when this goes off. Let's see, the front. Is this one? Yeah. All right. Now, you can tell that there's some stuff down in the bottom where I fried my okra, but it's not a lot of cornmeal. Cornmeal makes it just like powdery looking on the bottom, okay? Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you come around here while I get my stuff out to make my cream potatoes. We're going to need milk. We've got deviled eggs. I'll just show them this. We made pimento cheese today. It's playing on YouTube right now. Some sweet tea, some milk, some sour cream, some butter, salt and pepper, and that's it, right? And then we should have some taters. And I got my mixer right here handy dandy. I love my kitchen. And I'm going to put this right here. And I do believe my um, things are right here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to mix up some cream potatoes. So we got a big supper tonight. I don't have bread made, but Lord of mercy, we got everything in the world. We don't need no bread. Um, we hardly ever eat bread unless it's breakfast. Now, we'll eat um, cornbread if I'm having collard greens or soup or something. But I don't make bread for dinner, and I never have. Have I, Chris? No, not really. Never, never really made bread for dinner. Um, my mama made biscuits almost every night. Um. But I don't. And when she, my mama hardly ever had dessert. Moose soda. She hardly ever had dessert. And um, she would just butter a biscuit and put some sugar in it. 
some of y'all probably had this. Mama would put sugar in the biscuit. And then when we would come in there and say, Mama, I'm hungry, before it was time to go to bed, she would give us one of those sugar biscuits. Did your mama do that, Chris? Really? Well, she didn't make biscuits that often, did she? Lord, my mama did. Chris's mama made canned biscuits, y'all. Now, his mama didn't, did she? His mama, but now his mama could, his mama worked. My mama didn't. That's the difference right there. When a woman's got to go out and work, it's hard for her to have the energy to make up a real big supper. That's why they use their crock pots. Eat a lot of spaghetti, chili, soup. Don't you? All right, so I put a little bit of milk, some salt and pepper, some butter, and I'm about to put just a little bit of sour cream in here. Oh, we had friends come over Monday and I cooked a big supper. Well, a lunch. Let me get finished with this. And it was so funny. Because uh, he said, and she don't make mashed potatoes. She makes cream potatoes. He goes, and she puts sour cream and all that good stuff in there, don't you? And I said, yes. And he was happy. That's what I made. I made them gritty green beans. All right. There's our potatoes and salmon or fried okra. I want to hear it crunch. I'm going to post the um, deviled eggs this week too sometime this weekend. There it is. Crunchy. I forget I have this on. I guess I can hear it. Mmm. So good. Man. Now that's a mama that can cook. And that's why the kids still come. Right? And it's because I grew up people watch, watching people cook. I'm going to tell you, a recipe book is not all you need. You need to be able to watch somebody in the kitchen, throw a whole supper together, and watch them time it, and it really helps a lot. Y'all have a wonderful day, and we thank you so much for watching Collard Valley Cooks, where we cook like our mamas did. Love you.